Okay, and you should get to this screen now, the unpartitioned space. So what we want to do is we want to create this setup here. So three drives, 140%, 130%, and 130% as well. So we take a system drive. Well, if we're going to 10% is that's 800, that means 20% is 1600, that means 3200 is 40%. So if you click, if you press C here and change that to roughly 3200, that should be fine. Just press enter. Similarly, the unpartitioned space, you want to change that to 30%, so that's literally just a half of what we have, so that's 2400 here. And then again, lastly, we've got to see, put the whole thing in, that's you done. Now we want to store, store everything into this first partition here. We want to install XP into that. So you just press enter after that. And I want it to be NTFS quick. And that's us. So now we've done everything up to here. And we're now beginning to install XP. Okay, so once this part is installed, it's just a screen like so, and the virtual machine will reboot. <coughs> uh, don't press anything here, just let it run through. And there we are. Uh, Windows will now start to allow you to configure very shortly. It should be noted at this stage that for evidence you should be taking print screens at the relevant points. Um, I will, on the sheet, which will be found in an assessment 3 folder, you'll be able to see print screens that must um, be used. And we can discuss this next time I'm in, next week. Okay, let's take some time and I'll come back to you again when we get to that stage. Okay, now after a while, uh, maybe six minutes or so, you should be faced with this. Um, I believe in our task here, we want to configure for the United States keyboard, the United States language and currency, uh, and also, uh, well, that's certainly what we want to do to start with at this stage. And we certainly can do that. Now, um, if you click on customize, you'll see that it's already set to United States of course you can just have a little look around how you would maybe do the United Kingdom for example so do the location set the currency although it's already set I would like you to do it anyway um, if you click on customize here you can do quite a lot more to it um, you can go into languages uh, yeah some of these languages didn't come up there. Languages, click on details, and uh, you can even add a different type of keyboard. So, if you were wanting to add perhaps um, a different input language, such as United States, uh, sorry, English, um, English Zimbabwe, for example, uh, the way you want the keyboard laid out might be Ukrainian, seems a bit stupid, or United Kingdom extended, but just as an example, you can add these things in as you can see. So we can select this one anyway. But I want you to get used to doing that. Okay. So just apply all your changes. Hopefully you've made some just to get used to what you're doing. But those are the two things. You should be taking print screens of these at all times as well. But once you've done this, just click next. Now just put any name in. Doesn't really matter. And then you should use the product key which uh, in the lecturer should have. Take a bit of care doing it. If it doesn't work, it's more than likely that you've mistyped something. And just set any password you like. 
Okay, just next again. Now we've got 32 minutes worth of um, of in installation. So I'll come back to you again when that has been done. Now, see when you're inside this window, if you like to get out of it, you just click on Alt G and the little Start Menu button on the right hand side of the, the space bar. Click both those together and you get out of there. Okay. But anyway, that's just finished this part. Okay. We do the rest of these in uh, the control panel. Okay, so again we get this, just set up typical settings, that's fine. Also just go to next. I'll come back in a little while again. Okay, so towards the end, you should see, you should certainly see this page here when it asks you to verify that the time and the date are correct, so just click OK. And we're almost finished. Okay, so one more time, it reboots and it runs the version of XP, the evaluation copy, as you can see here. Once it's um, up and running, I will once again return. Okay, so we should now get this. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the music, but it's very annoying. So we're going to move on, on to next. Uh, I'm saying not right now. Continue on. Okay. I just want to skip that. In fact, we'll go next. In fact, we'll just skip it just now. No, remind me in a few days. Next. And we finish. Okay, so now we're onto the screen. Uh, onto onto Windows itself on XP, and uh, now we can carry out a number of operations. Now to remind ourselves of these operations, we're just going to have a little look. So we've done everything up until mouse movement and click speeds in SVG 32-bit color. Now let's just see if this is manageable just now. So we'll go into the control panel. Okay, now I think I'm going to switch to classic view because it's a bit easier to follow. Go into mouse. Right, you just change this to whatever you want. It seems to be fine though, to be honest. Uh, I would just leave it the way it was, but you know, take some print screens if you're doing this. And you can do what you like with it. It's fine. Um, just click OK. And that's that part done. I would I would definitely have done um, something to that, but uh, I don't want to change anything just now. Okay, we've got display. You want to change a new to a new theme, so I'm going to change to Windows Classic. Okay, fine. Um, let's remind myself. That I think it's 32 bit. That's what it wants to be. Appearance settings. Sorry. So 800 by 600, there's 16 bit and there's 32 bit. So I think that's what I would prefer it to be, is that one. It's not the best option yet for here actually, but uh, nevertheless. Okay. 
So let's have again a look at what we've done. So we've actually done mouse and movement and click speeds. Um, I've changed the theme. Now I want to set a screen saver. You should be taking print screens of all of these. Next is print. It's a screen saver for five minutes. So if I go back into display, set a screen saver. I'll be for five minutes. Done. Oops, I need to move that up a bit. Apply. Take a print screen. Go OK. Uh, OK, so next. <coughs> Disable Windows sounds for closing a program. OK. So you want to go to sounds. Sounds. Closing a program. It's already disabled anyway. Let's put one on. Take one off. Take a print screen of that and apply. Next, it's using local security settings to set a maximum password range. Now that one actually gets quite interesting, but we have to go to the start menu, then we go to run, and we type in gpedit.msc. So that's gpedit.msc. Uh, and now you've got a set of files and stuff that you need to, oh not files, sorry, you've got folders and things you need to use. Um, and the first one, I believe, is setting a maximum password age. So you want to go into your local computer policy, okay? Um, you want to go into your account policies. Now, I think they're in Windows, I believe. Security settings. Account policies. Password policy. And what did I say it had to be? Maximum password age. And just change that to whatever you want. Take a print screen of that. Okay, so next, what we need to do is use the local security settings to restrict the CD ROM access to locally logged on users only. So it's locally logged on users only. So again, from the same place in the GP edit, we click on Windows settings, security settings. We go into local policies and security options. And just look down for restrict CD-ROM access to locally logged on, blah, 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 logged on users only. And you can just enable that. And that's pretty much everything done. All you need to do is take a print screen for each one of those things. And that is fantastic. Um, to take a print screen, I think, in a virtual PC is a little different as well. I think you, you have to edit, so select all. And then Control C, so edit again, copy, and then do it that way. I think that's a better way. Sometimes there's, there's some errors start to happen when you get lost in the window. But anyway, that's how you would do it. Edit, select all, and then edit, copy, and then paste it to the, your page here.